Hey guys, it's Penguin here and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we're going to be taking another look at CraftSim. About three weeks ago, I uploaded my first CraftSim tutorial and that was CraftSim 2.0. And I mentioned that it was getting lots of constant updates and that still remains true. At this point in time, there's been four new modules introduced into the add-on, and we are now into CraftSim 6.7.2, which we're going to be talking about today. So basically, this is just part two of our CraftSim tutorial series, so make sure you go watch the first part before continuing on. In that first part, we covered the general settings of CraftSim, the reasoning and how to use Auctionator as your primary price source for CraftSim, and lastly, I cover the first five modules. So in today's video, I'll be talking about an update to a module as well as the new four, so please go watch that video and then come back and continue. But without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. And alright, an update that I want to quickly bring to your attention is actually a part of the Average Profit module, and this is the new show explanation as well as show statistics. So if we click on show explanation, if you are familiar with the previous version, this basically just does a way better job at explaining what's actually going on instead of just showing you a formula and saying, you know, here you go. Now, of course, I'm not going to cover this in today's video just because of time restraints, but feel free to pause or just look at this in game, and I do highly recommend reading through it. You'll notice a few changes from the previous versions to this one. Now, the main thing I want to point out is actually in tab 2, and this is what CraftSim refers to as the hidden skill value. You'll see this pop up in a few other parts of the add-on, so I want to make sure you know what this is. Now, technically, this has been a system that's been implemented since the start of Dragonflight, but it took a while for us to figure out what was going on, and also it took a while for CraftSim to actually implement this. Now, of course, once again, you can take your time to actually read this whole slide, but at the very, very basics, every time you craft an item, you have a chance to gain anywhere between 0 to 5% extra skill. Meaning if you are within 5% of your recipe difficulty, meaning you can skill up to that next quality within 5%, you can actually quote unquote proc and actually craft that higher quality without any sort of inspiration or anything like that. But once again, take a look at this because these are really helpful to understand what exactly is going on. Now, that's cool, the explanation is super nice, but I want to talk about the show statistics, and we're going to use actually enchanting to show this. So imagine we want to craft this item, right? The first thing that we do is, of course, refresh our auction prices. There we go. And we look at our add-on and say, awesome, I'm making an average profit of 23 gold. But we always remember that this is an average, right? You know, if I just craft a single item, it is very unlikely that I'm going to proc. Well, I have a 30% chance of procking, meaning, you know, one craft, two crafts, I probably won't make much profit just because of the fact that I have to make a quality three to actually make profit. So instead of having to guess how many you should craft, you can actually use this statistics addition. So right here, it breaks down all of the different circumstances. So as you can see, because this is an enchant, there are many, many different options, but you have your inspiration proc, your multicraft proc, resourcefulness, and also that hidden skill value. And so what this basically says is, all right, I have a 62.2% chance of nothing happening. I don't get any inspiration, Multicraft doesn't exist for enchants, no resourcefulness, basically no procs, whatever, and I'm going to lose 30 gold. However, you know, I have a 26.03% chance of procking inspiration, and if I do that, you know, I will craft a quality 3, and then my expected profit turns into 144 gold for that craft. Continuing on, you know, following the same trend, I have an 8.3% chance of procking resourcefulness, but not inspiration. So yes, I would save some gold, but it's still not going to bring me into the profit. Once again, you know, I have a 3.4% chance, or sorry, 347 of procking inspiration and resourcefulness, which would lead to this much profit, etc, etc. 
And then of course we have that expected profit, our average expected of 23 gold. And so now what we can do is actually type in how many crafts we want and it will give us our chance of profit. So for example, if I were to craft one item, I have a 59% chance of actually making gold, which hey, that's actually pretty decent. You know, if we bring this number up to two, that increases. We can bring this up to five, it goes up to 70%. And then let's say we put in 60. So now if we were to craft 60 items, we have a 99.8% chance of having our profit be higher than zero, meaning we make gold. So this is super awesome. Of course, this is a very easy, cheap enchant, so we don't have to craft a ton, but who knows? Maybe if you have super low inspiration, you might have to craft 200 items, etc. This is just good to play around with because you can know what type of odds you're dealing with. Moving on, we can actually take a look at the new modules and we're actually not going to go in order. The first one I wanna talk about is this actually craft results, which goes well with what we actually just looked at. Now what this states, you know, kind of what it sounds like, this is actually going to show you your real time results when crafting. So since we're talking about this enchant, we might as well use this as an example. So let's quickly buy some materials. I have plenty of chromatic dust, so let's just buy some vibrant shards. You know, we can buy 382, that's perfectly fine. Perfect, we have our mats, and let's say we want to craft 100 of these. I'm just gonna use a speed potion to speed this up, and let's actually queue 100. So now as we craft, you will see that our actual you know, items are being recorded. If we stop this after 10 crafts, we can take a look at this results panel. So the craft log is basically what you see right here in the crafting results, but with a little bit more information. So scrolling back at the top, our first item was inspired. You can see that right here. It had a 29.5% chance of happening. And because it procced, we made 143 gold with this item. The same thing happened the second time around, while the third one was just simply a normal craft, meaning we had a 70% chance of that happening and we actually lost 29 gold because of it. The next one, once again, was another inspired, then another nothing proc, followed by a few nothing procs, and lastly, two inspires. So basically the craft log is the same thing as default, but with more information. Now, of course, we're only taking a look at 10 items, but any sort of crafted items comes out right here. So out of our 10 crafts, we got five quality twos and five quality threes. Moving over to our session profit, that is exactly what it states. Out of this session of crafting, so these 10 items, I've made 570 total gold. Of course, I do have to sell it and everything, but that's how much profit we've made. And then lastly, the super very nice thing about this module is the actual statistics. So we crafted 10 crafts and our expected average profit was 23 gold. However, our actual real average profit is 57 because we got way more procs than, you know, we should have gotten because we basically got a 50% proc rate when we should only expect 30 and our real total profit was 570. And we can see exactly why that happened. So if we compare the real procs versus the expected procs, as you guys can see, we actually got five procs of inspiration when we were only expecting 2.9. Now you can't have, you know, 0.9 procs, that's just math related, but even so, you know, we beat that two to three estimate by gaining five, which is why our average profit is so much higher. Of course, multi-craft can't happen. We weren't expecting any resourcefulness, etc. So that is perfect. Now, of course, we can continue it to craft these items. Let's just queue up another 90, hit enchant, and you can see it just acting in real time. There we go. You know, we actually saved some materials right here. We inspired and actually saved. So our profit was even higher for that craft. And it's actually, you know, accounting for those items in the crafted item menu. And there we go, after 35 crafts, as you can see, our average profit is becoming more like the expected, which makes complete sense. 
So out of the 35 crafts, we have 11 proc quality threes, 24 proc twos, we've saved reagents, and our real average profit is now down to 26 gold compared to the expected of 23. So once again, it's just an average game. Sometimes you get super lucky, sometimes you don't. It's just what happens. And all in all, this is just a great module. Now, something even cool is that you can actually track multiple items. So if we start crafting these, this is actually going to be a part of the session as well. So you can see that the recipe statistics have reset, but the crafted item log and the session profit is still ongoing. So you could craft a ton of items and see your whole profit. And also lastly, if you are a spreadsheet person, you can actually export this into a spreadsheet, which is super cool. Of course, if you ever want to reset this, you just hit reset and boom. But this is one of the best additions to the add-on. Up next, the two other modules are a lot more simple. And the first one is price overriding. Now, if you guys have seen part one, I mentioned in part one that price overrides were actually just recently removed at that time of recording. And recently after it was placed back in and it was actually placed into its own module. Now, a lot of you are thinking, okay, why do you actually need to override prices? And I'm gonna show you a very good example. So we're taking a look at cooking and we're gonna take a look at the snow in a cone recipe. Now, the thing about this recipe is that if we quickly just scan the auction house, it looks super duper profitable, right? Craftsman is telling me, oh, I can make 94 gold per craft. I should get right on that but this is actually false information. Now, no matter what source you use, if you use Auctionator or TSM, generally what those add-ons do is first see if that item has a vendor value, meaning if you can buy it from a vendor, it will use that, and if not, it will use the auction house price. Now, in this specific example, we have the Snowball, which is technically a vendor item, but it's only available from a vendor during Winter's Veil, which of course happens for a very limited time each year. Now, technically, there are other sources to get this, like a toy and a mount, but we're not going to count those for the sake of this video. Meaning, the only way to buy this item outside of the Winter's Veil event is to buy it off the auction house. Now, of course, when the vendor buy price is 10 copper and the auction house price is 27 gold, that is a huge drastic difference. But that is where price overrides come in super, super clutch. So all we have to do is enable the overview and then just find the item we're looking at. So in this case, it is the snowball. You know, we only have three options. You can also do this with optional reagents, finishing reagents and crafted items. So if you wanted to override the actual price of the cone itself, but here's the snowball. Next, you decide if you want to overwrite this for all recipes or just this single recipe. Now, in this case, snowballs are really only used in this one recipe, so it technically doesn't matter. But if you're overriding something like cloth or ore, you can be a lot more picky. In this case, we're just going to say all recipes, and then we're going to type in our price. In this case, you know, we're going to say a bulk of these are at 28.22 silver. So we're going to type in 28.22. Just make sure it saves and hit escape or just hit the X button. And there we go. Now this is actually utilizing that 28 gold for this craft. Now the awesome part is that this is actually still profitable. You know, we're making 12 gold per craft, but we're no longer seeing those ridiculous numbers in the 90s, etc. So this is perfect. Now, fair warning, I will just say, make sure you don't forget that you override an item. For example, if I went into here and hard coded, you know, this fish for five gold for some reason and hit escape, there's really no indicator that it's actually overrided. So if I, you know, go do some stuff for an hour, come back, try to craft this recipe again, and I'm like, what in the world's going on? It's not lining up with auction house prices, etc. It's likely because I have an override going on. Now, the nice thing is that you can reset all overrides or you can just reset the overrides with this recipe, but I will just say, make sure you always check back or undo it after each craft, just so you're not accidentally playing with false values. Now, of course, this can be used in many different situations. 
In our example, it was for vendor items, but maybe you bought, you know, items at a super nice discount. So you want to use that discounted price instead of the auction house price. Go ahead. Maybe you're crafting these feasts right here and you craft your own briskets. So you want to use your brisket crafting cost versus the auction house crafting cost. Once again, go ahead, overwrite it. But this is just, once again, a very nice addition. Up next, we have a super handy module called Recipe Scan, which basically just finds profitable crafts for you. You guys know, probably by now you're in routine, that generally, especially if you use Auctionator, you open up your auction house, you scan for profit, you know, you check the item, and then you move down the list. So we're like, okay, how much are bolts making? Sweet. How much are chronocloth making? Sweet, etc., etc. But we can speed this up by opening up Recipe Scan and choosing a few parameters. By default, I kind of like it with these default settings. Basically, I don't want to see not learned recipes because I can't craft them anyways. So we're not going to include those. And also, we're not going to include gear or anything soul bound. And we can choose a scan mode. Now, this is very similar to, you know, optimization. You can choose, you want to optimize for guaranteed quality, optimize for inspiration, or you can use quality one reagents, quality twos, quality threes, etc. In this case, let's just for our example, pick quality twos, and you can decide if you want to use profession tools. It's just going to say, hey, you might lag a little bit because it's using more power. But after we do that, we can just hit scan recipes and boom. Immediately, it's telling me, you know, how much profit I can make with what craft. So if we take a look here, my most profitable item is the reagent bag. And so if we click this button, it will take us there. And boom, we can see, you know, we are making it some good profit right there. The next one is actually the cooled cushion, which is just a random toy, but cool. We have another toy, the tent, etc. And so this just automatically shows you the most profitable items. Now you're probably wondering what scan mode you should actually use, and so let me show you the difference. Right here, if we scan with quality two, that means we are going to be using quality two materials. So with this scan, as you guys can see with quality two mats, I am making almost 11 gold profit with this craft because I can't guarantee quality threes, I'm dealing with inspiration, I'm crafting twos and threes, that's the average profit, which is being reflected right here at 11 gold profit. It's rounded up a little bit, but there we go. If we change this to quality three, meaning we're actually using quality three, you can see that this actually falls down to eight gold. If we update this ourselves and use the highest quality, just do a quick little refresh. There we go. As you can see, that lines up because yes, we are now actually guaranteeing quality three, but these mats are a lot more expensive and etc. So basically the scan mode is just really comes down to the types of materials you use. Now, of course, you can always just optimize it either for optimize for inspiration procs or optimize it for guaranteed quality. Either way, it's up to you, but do keep in mind this does change things. So in this case, you know, if I did a quality three scan, this would only be showing eight gold. While if I did a quality two, it's actually showing, a, hey, you can make way more gold with the same craft. So just keep that in mind. But this is a great way to see all of your options within a click of a button. Then lastly, we have our final new module, which is called customer service. Now this is strictly for the use of work orders and it's a little bit finicky, but I'll try my best to show this off. Now, first we are going to need two accounts to try to show this off. So I do have my second account running in the background. It's gonna pop up on the corner of the screen for you guys. There we go. And now I can show this off. Now to show the crafter side of things, all you have to do is hit customer service and you have a few options. Up first, I recommend if you're going to do this to enable auto reply. This basically means that if somebody basically types exclamation mark craft and then links an item, they will immediately receive this information and you don't have to do anything on your side. And what the information that they will receive is completely customizable to you. By default, it's going to give them the highest guaranteed result of that item. It's going to give them the highest result with inspiration, and it's going to list the crafting cost of that item. 
If you guys want to deal with different things, this right here is like the coding of it. You guys can play around with this yourself, but let me show you this in action. So to demonstrate this, we're going to utilize the second account, but let's create a situation. Basically, imagine my crafter that we just looked at was advertising in trade chat saying, hey, I can craft fishing caps, um, you know, for super cheap. If you guys want information, just send exclamation mark craft with the item link and you'll get some. So I'm like, sweet, right? So I'm over on my main character and I'm going to whisper tiger sense. And then all I have to do is say, hey, exclamation mark craft. And I had to link it to myself because I don't have the item or anything, but I link that item and hit enter. Immediately upon sending that, the craft sim add-on is going to send me all of that specific customized message. So I got that the highest guaranteed result is a quality three meaning without any sort of procs, I'm getting automatically a quality three cap. However, I have a 21.3% chance of actually inspiring and turning that quality three into a quality five. Lastly, it spits out the crafting cost. It's gonna cost me about 60 gold. And what I need to send is two rainbow pearls, five quality three spools and three quality three bolts. So I'm like, sweet, I can go send my order or say, you know what, no thanks, and that's super simple. You know, on my side, if we take a look back over to the crafter, nothing I really had to do, right? Like, I just had to have this enabled, super, super simple. Now, of course, you know, you can customize this and add in, you know, please add a tip of 5k, whatever you want to do. Maybe you want to say, you know, highest guaranteed result you can type that in just so people know what it means etc but this is something that you can format yourself once again it's up to you if you want to use this but then we have a last version which is actually a live preview so what this allows you to do is actually connect with somebody if you guys both have craft sim so the downside of this is that the auto reply is actually available to anybody because it's just a whisper, while the live preview is only available to two people who have CraftSim themselves. But what we can do is hit allow connections and then it simply type in the character's name. In this case, you know, my character is named AltSense, so we can simply do that and hit send an invite. What that happens is I get a little message in chat, meaning, hey, you can connect to my live invite. Then all I have to do on my second character, let's blow up that screen for you, just open up a profession menu, and there we go, that live preview comes up, and I say, hey, this is Tiger Sense, and I'm looking at tailoring. Now I can go through all of the different recipes I have learned and see what they have to offer. So, for example, let's say I wanted that fishing cap, I can go over and see, okay, they have the recipe, let's look at it. Now, it does take a little bit, or just a few seconds to actually update that request, and boom, there we go. Now we can see basically exactly what that little whisper message showed us, right? The expected result I can guarantee is a quality three, however, there's a 21.3% chance of procking a quality five and the materials I have to send them is two of the pearls, five of the quality three thread, and three of the quality three bolts. Now, of course, this is a, you know, simpler item to look at, but maybe I was interested in a garment, and the only epic garment I actually have is this one right here, but we can use this as our example. And here we go. Now we can actually play around with different options, but at the default level, as you can see, we can actually expect a quality four, but once again, I have a 21.3% chance for procking inspiration. Now, actually due to, you know, this character's level, I only have to, you actually send them a quality one thread and quality two bolts. So technically I could save gold if I really wanted, but it really depends on recrafting and my goals for the future. But maybe I actually wanted to add a blue silken lining. And here we go, it's now updated and it's saying, hey, if you actually want that quality three lining, you can only expect a quality three instead of a four, but it can still proc up to five. And hey, you should actually, you know, use half quality one, half quality two, and still quality two bolts when sending. So yeah, I'm not sure if anybody has actually used this, you know, I'm not somebody who does crafting orders myself, but this is a cool addition to at least try out. 
Of course, you know, once you're done with it, you can just, you know, disable connections or whatever, and you're good to be on your way. But yeah, guys, that is it for all of the Craft Sim current updates. Now, of course, there may be some other quality of life updates, but these are the big four new modules, as well as the new statistics and profit explanation that I really wanted to cover. I know these are long videos and I know these are technical videos, but hopefully these are still super helpful and hopefully you got at least one thing out of it. As always, everybody, if you made it to the end, let me know and let me know what you want to see next. As always, everybody, I really do appreciate you watching my content and have a good day, everybody.